God. Okay, thankfully we're going to be we're watching something that's going to cheer me up. Just got done reliving uh, the Nostalgia Critics uh, review of uh, Freddy Got Fingered, so... <sighs> okay. So, anyway, we're moving on to something I'm very excited about. It's time for a death battle! And this death battle in particular is Carnage from the Marvel Universe and Lucy from Elf and Lead. So... I don't know hard or Elf and Lied. jack shit about Carnage, though. Well, Carnage is... You know about Venom, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, they're both. Symbiotes. I didn't know that much until recently when the movie came out, and then I started looking into it. And apparently, Venom is a very, very big favorite of my buddy Chance, and so he told me a lot about him too. Well, yeah, um, and Venom... he also told me some about Carnage. Actually, he did. He did explain a little to me after we watched Venom, and he's like, "I'm actually really excited if they're going to do Carnage because these are the reasons I really love Carnage." And he explained to me how he was almost like, uh, kind of like a horror like movie like serial killer type. Well, he is. Almost. He is. I mean, uh, I, I mean, he's. He's hands down one of the more vicious killers in the Marvel in the Marvel universe because you have Venom. Venom's more of an anti-hero. Carnage is a pure villain. He's like, oh my gosh. Well, we'll get into we'll get into all the details and everything. Yeah. But I will say this: Carnage is probably Chad's favorite. Uh, fa- my buddy Chad, his favorite Spider-Man villain, simply because of the depth. Of which he will go to, to to really peel back someone's psyche and and just break them. Oh yeah, that's probably why Chance likes him as well. Yeah, and and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Some of the stuff that he's done. I mean, some of the like depraved things that he's done is actually really really nasty. And I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll actually come away from this liking cards, especially if they go into the depths of his character history and everything. And. I'm also excited if they do a Carnage movie with the specific person that they're uh, going to have play Carnage, Woody Harrelson, by the way. Yeah. Uh, which, a strange thing about Woody Harrelson, not a lot of people know this, his dad was a hitman for the mob. What? Really? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, I his dad was all. a hitman for the mob and committed, I think, uh, actually... So I only can't... really found out about him, uh, like I hadn't seen any of his movies until I think Zombieland. <laughs> And then I went back and watched what's the one where he's like a uh, a criminal like with that one girl. Yeah, here he is, Charles Harrison, and this is his dad. He looks like, exactly like him. Yeah, he kind of looks like somebody who would be in the mob too. And uh, he and so, killed. Like, look at that mugshot. Like his hair is still slicked back in his mugshot. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was a hitman, and he killed. Let's see. I think it was. Yeah, he killed. I think one, two, three, four. He killed, I think, I believe, like, ten people. He killed a Texas judge. Jesus. He killed a Texas... And uh, there was also allegations that he was involved with uh, with the mob. That, or not, not the mob, though, but that, uh, with John F. Kennedy. What was the movie that Woody Harrelson was in with that one girl that they were, like, uh, kind of like almost a Bonnie and Clyde type deal? Like, by the end of the movie? Or by the part of the movie? Was he a superhero? No. They were regular people. They were, like, criminals. Oh, Natural Born Killers. Yeah, Natural Born Killers. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, I watched that one afterwards because I saw he was in it, and I was like, oh, he was pretty cool in Zombieland, and it said it was supposed to be really good. And oh, got, Natural Born Killers right. is really good. It's pretty cool. It is really good. I liked it a lot. Uh, also, that's another film that Robert Downey Jr. was in. Yeah. <laughs> Surprised the hell out of me. But, all right. Anyway, we've got the uh, we got the video for uh, this Death Valley queued up here. Let's get it on screen. Let's give it a watch. Yeah, screw it, Zach. If my ex-wives have taught me anything, it's that there's no real limit to crazy. Like Carnage, Marvel's dangerously insane psychopath. Yep. Or Lucy, the messed up murder lady from Elfin Lied. Elfin Lied. It's German. Yeah, whatever. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. <laughs> Cletus Cassidy didn't have the chance to be a well-adjusted adult because his entire family was already crazy. While Cletus was just a boy, his father got sent to jail for killing his mother. Which he did because she had tried to kill Cletus. Which she did because Cletus had tortured and killed her dog, Fifi. Well, go Miss Cassidy! All dog murderers deserve death, even if they're eight. 
Right, Jack Spaniels? <laughs> Good boy. Oh, and uh, Cletus murdered his grandma too, cause eh, she was kind of a bitch. He didn't stop there and wound up burning down his own orphanage. Years later, he was finally arrested and convicted for 11 murders. You mean the 11 murders they knew about? But while in prison, Cletus found that he wasn't alone. In fact, his cellmate just so happened to be Eddie Brock. Who you may know is that creepy guy covered in black ink called Venom. That ink is actually a symbiotic alien known as a Clintar. This symbiote bonded with Eddie, transforming him into a powerful and violent rival for the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. But what Eddie didn't know was... It was pregnant! Oh, <laughs> time to go out for cigarettes, Eddie. Well, symbiotes actually reproduce asexually. When Eddie became Venom once again, the symbiote sort of oozed out its spawn and left it there. Just like me and my dad. Well, this new symbiote immediately attached itself to Cletus, but unlike the Venom one, it merged through a cut on his skin, creating this suit made out of blood. Ew. Yep. That doesn't seem sanitary. And together, they became Carnage. Carnage. A fitting name for a psycho mass murderer. Cletus and his new symbiote quickly got up to what they knew best, creating Maximum Carnage. That was a good game. <laughs> it was great. And with his new superpowers, he was a vicious force to be reckoned with. He has the same superhuman strength, speed, and durability as Venom, and supposedly even greater, like a Venom 2.0. He can shapeshift to make all sorts of killer weapons, like axes, swords, and spikes. He can even rip those weapons off himself or launch them at his victims. Have you ever tried ripping your fingers off and throwing them at people? Cause that's just kind of what Carnage does. The symbiote can also reach out with dozens of chaotic blood-soaked tendrils, perfect for strangling the people he doesn't want to see anymore. With a single touch, Carnage can infect a person with a portion of his symbiote, controlling or torturing them at his leisure. He has unbelievable regeneration, and even if somebody finds a way to disable his suit, the Carnage symbiote lives inside his bloodstream and can come back out through something as meager as a paper cut. Also, the symbiote literally sees everything around it. It's kind of like wearing a suit made of eyeballs. But let's say you're able to dodge his projectiles, outrun the tendrils, and get out of sight from the eyeball suit. You're still not safe. He will catch you because he can sprout wings and fly. I already see what one advantage Lucy went? has over him. Since realizing that shape or at least is a really one power that does give him an advantage over So Lucy. he's able to fly, he's totally aware of everything around him, and he's full of blood? This guy's like a giant mosquito of death. Uh, sure. Carnage has said he's at least 10 times faster than the average man, but that's pretty modest because Venom has shown he can move fast enough to catch up to a bullet after it's fired. And Carnage is frequently shown to be as fast or even faster than him. This puts Carnage over 1,500 miles per hour, over twice the speed of sound. He's lifted a 50-ton tank, and he can overpower Spider-Man, whose best supported strength feat was lifting that giant machine thing that weighed as much as a 1965 locomotive. Which would put it around 130 tons. And you know those weird tendril things crawling around his body? When he wanted to find a missing journalist in New York, he climbed to the top of the Empire State Building and just stretched them all out over the city. He found her by this coastline, and this building nearby looks a lot like the consolidated Edison plant between 14th and 15th Street. That's about two miles away. And as a thank you for saving her, she shot Carnage in the head. Well, fine. Save your own ass next time, lady. Eh, hey, he was fine. Carnage's durability doesn't come from a sturdy build. Instead, his form is malleable and somewhat fluid. Technically, his human body still exists somewhere in that mass of blood, flesh, and writhing tentacles. But even when he's hit by a train, struck by missiles, or blasted apart by a tritium bomb, he can always just pull himself back together. So long as there's a piece of him still around. Given the size of that blast, it looks like Carnage survived a blast worth 125 tons of TNT. Very impressive. Also, he once smothered and survived a gene bomb designed to wipe out all of humanity except mutants. He's even survived being ripped in half and thrown into space. Seriously, what kills this guy? Well, he does share the same weaknesses as other symbiotes, namely extremely loud noises and heat. Well, until he traded the sound one for a weakness against some Cthulhu-looking magic. Carnage has been through a lot, but with two minds as one, he always gets back up to keep doing what he loves. Murder, murder, and, you know, more murder.
That's what he lives for. There are some mysteries the world holds which no one is meant to know. Every day, something, somewhere, comes ever closer to destroying everything you hold dear. One such <coughs> secret is the Diclona. Uh, no big deal. They're just a race of crazy people who want to infect human beings to make more Diclona and then wipe out all of humanity. Oh, look at the cute little horns. They look like kitty ears. To accomplish this, the Diclona would have to rely on their queen, Kaede. Better known as Lucy. Luckily for everyone, some important people figured this out and captured her. And now it's time for your only warning. Right, Lucy's methods, let's just say they're not for the faint of heart. And let's also say that those lucky important people were about to get very, very unlucky. Yep. Jesus Christ, what's happening? To truly understand, <laughs> let's take a step back. As an infant, Lucy was abandoned by her parents and left alone to suffer a life of constant discrimination. It was the horns, wasn't it? Right, even the average kid hates growing up in an orphanage, but it was especially painful for her. Until she found a stray puppy and decided to take care of it. That adorable little critter and her became best friends. And then the other kids from the orphanage went out and beat it to death and forced her to watch. <laughs> Well, no shit, she wants to kill everyone. Go ahead, Lucy. Tear up those little bastards. Oh! That scene Damn. gave me chills. This was the first time Lucy Especially unleashed with the her psychokinetic dog. vectors. As a Diclonius queen, Lucy is meant to use these vectors to infect ordinary human beings with the Diclonius virus. Oh, but she uses them for so much more. For simplicity's sake, think of the vectors as invisible arms which can sprout from Lucy's back. Lucy can use up to 28 vectors with a normal range of about 6 to 7 feet. When she gets really serious, her horns grow and the vectors get way longer and stronger. She can vibrate her vectors at different frequencies, and each level of vibration has different effects. Kind of like that thing that my ex-wife had on the nightstand that I thought was one of those crazy pens. At low frequencies, her vectors can pass through objects with no effect. At a medium frequency, the vectors become solid, like extendable hands, while still completely invisible. These can be used as shields and lift heavy objects. Oh man, if I had those things, I'd be messing with people all the time. Like tying their shoes from across the room. Also, since this seems to be a thing in this episode, she can fly. It's not really flying, she's just lifting herself off the ground. With the third frequency, Lucy turns her vectors into invisible blades. These can cut through people and bend metal. And with the last and highest frequency, Lucy gets explosive. No, really, at this level, they finally become visible and can strike with enough force to detonate. I don't Damn. think that part was in they the end. Anyway. this chick the queen for it nothing. Wasn't. Unfortunately, Lucy manga, is though. not always in control of what Apparently she does. Extra stuff. Turns out she has developed several alternate personalities. Yeah, getting shot in the head can do that to you. That injury specifically created Nyu, a passive, almost childlike persona which exists as a coping mechanism for Lucy's trauma. As Nyu, Lucy would finally find friends and began forging a path toward hopeless redemption. Unlike her third personality, the so-called DNA voice, which constantly whispers in her ear that she's got a job to do. Kill them all, Lucy, before they hurt more puppies. Ooh, I'm spooky DNA. She could do it, too. Lucy's fast enough to block bullets from a point-blank range. And once, she actually saved herself from a bullet after she had already been shot. As in, while the bullet was traveling between her skin and her heart. It looks like she's getting shot by an MP5, which fires bullets at nearly 900 miles per hour. With her body type, the distance between Lucy's skin and heart is less than an inch, probably around 2.4 centimeters. Given the bullet speed and the distance her vector would have to reach from her back before the bullet hit her heart, her vector had to move nearly 1,900 miles per hour. That's over twice the speed of sound. She can throw a pen through a guy's skull. Brutal. And even toss this giant boulder. When compared to this guy, Bando, whom we know is six feet tall, we can determine the boulder weighs about 75 tons. Her vectors are also tough enough to block a missile from the Air Force. 
While the exact model of missile is unspecified, it is fairly large and likely an air-to-surface type. I bet it's one of the Air Force's slams or standoff land attack missile built off the back of the Navy's harpoon missile. In fact, a harpoon is used against a different Diclonius at one point. So this beast slammed into her vector at 500 miles per hour with a 1,000 pound explosive yield, and it didn't even phase her. Even without a vector shield, she survived a pretty nasty explosion herself, though it did knock her out. Impressive, but how about the time she punched through an island? A strike literally compared to nuclear fusion. This kicked up a 100 foot tidal wave and a 9.2 magnitude earthquake. A level so high, there's only been four comparable quakes ever recorded. Her vectors can be as wide as buildings and reach into outer space, except that's about when Lucy reaches her limit. Right, as a Diclonius, Lucy has a few severe weaknesses. Her vectors can be nullified if she's struck in the forehead, or if one of her horns are broken. Also, if Lucy pushes herself too hard, she starts to melt. Gotta like ice cream out in the Texas sun. It's not pretty. She's just a big puddle of goop with a face. But she's still a total badass, even at her meltiest. While suffering agonizing pain, she was capable of single-handedly halting a massive military threat, while healing and protecting the person she loved most. Perhaps redemption wasn't so hopeless after all. Hey, let's watch her kill some more people. Oh. <laughs> Alright, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, you'd be crazy not to get in on this deal. Da 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 Blue Apron dot com Blue Apron a Blue Apron Blue Apron dot com Okay. So Oh let's uh But right now it's time for a death battle Okay. I know who you're probably going to go with. Uh -huh. Probably. State your case. Lucy. Yes. Um, okay, so there's there's one thing that they said that was like one of his advantages that his whole thing can see like from any angle, right? Okay, well, her vectors are invisible unless she wants them to be visible, basically. Um, so that's minimally useful to him. He does have to be obliterated. He's basically Majin fucking Boo. It's yeah. The sound of it, like in terms, of, like of how hard he is to kill. Which. But I think the fact that she can set off like you know, nuclear nuclear level. fission level like blows, could allow her to beat him that way. I think so too. Also. And also, he's got a weakness to sound and heat. Um, I don't know if heat could be a thing, but. I feel like the vibration, like the frequencies of like those, that could play into it somehow. Yeah, and, and also, then I will say oh, with yeah, this one, I'm just straight up biased because like I love Lucy. So. Well, that's fine, and not like the show. I love Lucy, but I love Lucy from Elf and Lee. So. Da, 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 da. Sorry. Uh, also, don't forget this. Lucy's uh, Lucy's uh, uh, her uh, tendrils can reach into space. Yeah. So. Whereas he can reach about two miles. Yeah, his vec like so she, she could actually outrange him technically as well. Well, it depends on how like it deep into the battle if she uses her maximum power, she could blow him up. She could take him into space and then super collide her super collide her vectors in space and then blow him up effectively. Something like that, yeah. I mean, that's that's what I would do if I were her. Also, I'm going to go with Lucy as well, because I know Carnage is very tough. I know that Cletus is, holy hell, Cletus is a psychopath, but Lucy, Lucy actually has several, like, several big advantages in this. I know Cletus will have the killer instinct on his side, all the time because he doesn't have a split personality like Lucy. Oh, that, that's another thing. Yeah, basically, like it didn't really explain like exactly what his intelligence level would be, but I feel like Lucy's pretty intelligent. When oh, she's, she is. when she's not new, anyways. Well, yeah. Um, and uh, he uh, comes off as someone who would be a lot more reckless 
He is. Um, just because he's like psychotic, you know. So I feel like she could out tactic him to an extent as well. Okay. So that's why I think like there's like at least five to six advantages I can see. All right. Well, so. uh, I think we've made our decision. Let's get to the death battle. It's also weird how that screen looks three dimensional. Like it almost looks like the text pops off the screen at you. Yeah, it kind of does. Crazy. Pretty cool. Hey, Lucy. <laughs> You actually. Sure. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Yeah. I think he's trying to figure her out. Like, what her range is and what her uh, attack patterns are. Was a challenging opponent. I didn't even it think was about that. Difficult for Lucy to deal any lasting they said he killed a dog. He had the yep. It's like John Wick, the basically. Lucy fighting as a God. Model, basically pissed off the female John Wick. And keep on fighting. Sadly, Carnage came up short in pretty much everything else. Right. Carnage was tough, but not invincible. Even his surviving that gene bomb isn't quite as impressive as it sounds. Since he had no other feats to even remotely back up planetary level durability, and the bomb was more akin to a biological weapon anyway. While Carnage's tendrils could pass speeds of Mach 2, Lucy's vectors once reached into outer space. By timing her accompanying monologue and comparing the longest vector's length to the curvature of the Earth, it's clear she reached over 2,400 miles in 20 seconds max. Way longer than Carnage's two mile feet. All this means her vectors were moving at least 440,000 miles per hour. More than uh, 500 times the speed more. of sound, and 250 times faster than Carnage. Good luck getting past that! And this was really the biggest hurdle. With Lucy's redonkulous speed and Carnage's healing powers, it all boiled down to one thing. Who could hit the killing blow first? I mean, Carnage could respawn from scraps, so the only way to beat him for good was to totally vaporize him. And Lucy had the perfect answer to that. Remember that time she hit an island so hard she caused a 9.2 magnitude earthquake and a 100 foot tall tidal wave? Such a feat would require an enormous amount of explosive energy. 
approximately 31,000 tons of TNT, similar to the bomb that hit Hiroshima. It's literally compared to nuclear fusion in the Elfin Lied manga. Elfin Lied, it's German. The point is, in order to beat Carnage for good, Lucy needed to totally obliterate him. And she could do that. The heat produced within the initial impact of a nuclear explosion can reach temperatures up to 180,000 degrees Fahrenheit more than 18 times hotter than the surface of yeah, the sun. Heat. And to top it off, heat was Carnage's biggest weakness. Even if Lucy's explosive force was just a fraction of this, it would still have been far too much for him. She just needed to smack him before he could power through her vectors, which chances were pretty slim for that happening anyway, because there's a bunch of them and they're so damn fast. Hitting Carnage with a big explosion punch was way easier. Cletus and his symbiote may have had the endurance, but Lucy's space-worthy speed, overwhelming presence, and nuclear strength won the day. She dealt the Carnage needed for a total victory and took the lead. There, I said it right, Wiz. Happy? The winner is Lucy. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the fight, you can get a first membership and watch our commentary by clicking that box over there. Thank there we go. Hell yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Elfin lead, uh, Elfin lead won. And, uh, yeah, so she, uh, Lucy, Lucy just superior in every way, pretty much. As you expected, pretty much. And, and honestly, when they started naming the stuff out, I was just like, yeah, nuclear fusion puts out a shit ton of heat. And heat is Carnage's biggest, like, most huge weakness. So, that goes without saying. So, and also the speed. Just the speed of her vectors is too much. I mean, you'd need, you'd need some pretty, some pretty ridiculous speed to get past those. Yeah. And even if you got past them, there's no guarantee that you'll do enough damage to her to really do the job. Uh, like, there's other Diclonius in the show that kind of put up a fight against her, especially uh, I can't remember if it's actually Nana or if it's a different one that they meet towards the end of the anime. But like I was trying to think of characters that I think would be able to possibly fight her and I don't know for sure which ones are fast enough. Maybe Kirby because they said that Kirby was fast as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Kirby. Sonic maybe. Maybe. But I don't know how Sonic would do a lot of damage. Well, like hitting her, Goku, in, hitting her in the forehead or breaking her horn is like all they really have to manage. Well, Goku, I think, could do it. I, I don't really know how fast Goku's supposed to be, but yeah, probably. Like with instant transmission and stuff, maybe. Yeah, with that alone, that's way that's way more than I think I think she's well, used to. They also to. don't really know a maximum like block force because yeah, she blocked a missile, but could she block a spirit bomb? Like, you don't really know. Spirit bomb might be enough to just wipe her out. No you never know. You never know. So, honestly, I can I can see why this was, this was pretty much, hands down, always going to be Lucy's, like, Lucy's fight to lose. I mean, because I've seen, uh, I've seen a bit of Elfin, Li Elfin Light, and whew, lead lead lied <laughs> lead lied tomato tomato potato potato you know it doesn't really matter but all right so elfin lied uh i've seen a bit of it and lucy's a very vicious individual especially if you catch her on at a bad day you catch her on a bad day you're fucked that's 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 pretty much it and I feel as though everything that we witnessed in this, there's really no way Carnage could have even gotten close to her. I mean, yeah, he's got the killer, you know, the killer instinct all the time, but Lucy, Lucy can turn that on pretty much whenever she wants to. So, yeah, I guess all around, winner by unanimous decision, without even, you know, by knockout. Without any way around it, I really don't see how Carnage could win. Lucy. I, Lucy wins. So, yeah. <sighs> Alright, well, ladies and gentlemen, this was this was an interesting one. And plus, 
it's really late right now. It is currently two in the morning, and we got to get up and uh, do some stuff tomorrow. And also, I got to run a few tests over here on this computer, so uh, that's going to be fun. And uh, anyway, I guess until next time, signing off. I'm Nate. I'm Nick. And if you want to watch the original, link is always in the description. And, of course, don't forget to check out our Patreon and our Discord. And until next time, we'll see you then. Peace out. Thank you.